Lori organizes. That's a little bit of a tongue twister. Lori Morris Lori, Lori organizes. Anyway, hi Lori. Hi. <laughs> How are you doing today? I am great and thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Thank you. So we met through a, a friend who highly has recommended you and I have loved seeing all of your projects. I've been looking at you um, online. So super excited. And when I told a few people about today, the my phone has been flooding with questions. So they may pop in and ask some as well. So question for you. Organization, that word, for some people it's motivating and for some people it's scary. What does that mean to you? <sighs> to me, it's super motivating and super or, uh, super exciting because that's something that just fuels and brings me lots of joy. Uh, and we all have different strengths, different talents. And that is one thing that I like that I can offer somebody that does not have a ton. But there are simple things that people can do to try and stay on top of things and try to stay you know, decluttered and not to be afraid of it and to tackle things um, in smaller chunks. If a big project or a big room is very daunting or very intimidating to them. So what would you say are some of the steps? I know I saw on your um, Facebook page on your bio and in your intro, it said that you like lists. So I'm like, yes, I've got step one down. I love lists. But what's next? <laughs> So one of the things I was thinking about with the situation we're in right now in this quarantine, and I myself fell into it of like, oh my gosh, I'm going to get so much done. But I'm finding that, and I think a lot of people don't realize how stressful things are right now and how it's affecting us. So I encourage people to write their list of what they want to accomplish, maybe prioritize it once it's all written down, then make a new list of what they really want to tackle and then break it down, like I said, into those smaller steps. You're not home alone. You've got kids, depending on what age they are, they still need us. And if we have small chunks of time to accomplish maybe smaller chunks, or if you, you know, have a spouse and they can manage the kids for a day and they can let you have the time to manage like a whole room or a whole closet, that would be something that I would recommend. Just break it down. I had someone years ago, like, how about visualize like a sausage, like a summer sausage and cut it into slices. And I thought, huh, then it's not so overwhelming. You can manage one slice at a time and don't think you can get it all done in one giant swoop. So do you, when you're making these lists to chunk it out, do you do a, a physical handwritten list? Do you like it on your smartphone? Where do you like to keep these lists? I do both because I can't get rid of paper. Some people go all digital and I think that's fantastic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> a paper grocery list and a digital just on my notes. But what I have found is I'm holding my phone at the grocery store and my thumb gets a little crazy and I've deleted my entire list. Oh no. And then panic sets in. <laughs> no. I've taken a screenshot of my list when I get to the grocery store okay. every time. Um, but it just, it depends what kind of a person you are, but then you don't want papers all over the place. So you need to decide where to house them. So instead of having a million pieces of paper, I have like a to-do notebook yeah. and I'll make my list and cross it off. And when that page gets crazy, I'll transfer what I haven't done yet onto the next page and kind of keep going, like, going from there. And plus then I can look back at stuff that I've, done and that gives you a feeling of accomplishment and like I feel like I've done nothing and I wish I would have started that I was telling my husband instead of our calendars being full of what we're going to do there's nothing I wish I would have written down what we've done every day because it's so like monotonous and the same thing is going on but I can't remember what I've done so I do find myself going back and writing down on my to-do list things after they're done solely so you can cross it off it is gratifying <laughs> It, some people are checklists to do. Yeah. So I like that. Absolutely. So when you go in, you typically do your organizing with, is it um, homes, businesses? Who do you know? Who's your normal client? Okay. Normal client is homeowners and we've done every room of the house. So I don't need to list them off. Um, 
we've done or we've talked with somebody about doing even their outdoor space, their de their deck okay. kind of crazy. It's jumbled. How can we get it more managed? But when a, co a client contacts me, we set up a phone call, talk about what their goals are, what's holding them back. And then I ask them to send me a few pictures. And from the pictures, a lot of times I can give them a rough estimate with organizing. You cannot give a concrete. It's going to take this many hours, this many days until you really get in there. We'll give a ballpark figure, but I always ask people do not nail me to this number because until we start opening boxes or pulling things off shelves, you really don't know. And it depends how involved the homeowner is. Some people are right there, elbow to elbow. We're making decisions. Other times we go in, clear the room, clear out a shelf, and then we'll pull them back in from their phone call or their meeting, make some decisions, and we do that back and forth all day. Um, so anyway, so if I can't make a good estimate off of just the pictures, then I will schedule a time to go into the home, walk through, take some measurements, talk about things that we might need to buy, um, and then we schedule. So you were already a little bit virtual in the first place um, for the beginning part. Mm -hmm. True. Okay. So when you go to buy the items, what are some generic, like some tools um, that everyone should have uh, for organizing different areas of the home? Okay. I've been debating if this would be too boring or monotonous, but I am surrounded by some of my favorite things. Please. So we would love it. I would love it. <laughs> So I'll pick them up and you tell me if you can see them because I'm like this big on my phone. So it's going to be hard. Okay. Um, oops, and I just lost my piece of paper. Um, so when kids I mean, were little and one thing I wanted to say is, you know, I'm married. I have three kids. They're teenagers now, but I've been through the baby stage. I've been, I did work and do daycare. I was a stay at home mom. You know, my husband traveled a ton. Mm -mm. Sorry. <laughs> Interrupting. All good. <laughs> You know, my husband traveled a ton. I mean, just a lot when my kids were little, don't live by family. So I feel like I really can relate to a lot of people. And I've worked in nursing homes. I love, you know, older adults. I just, I really, I just love people. Um, so anyway, I kind of, I can start with kids. And before I go into the objects, you and I were talking the other day, just about how to get your kids involved in keeping your house mm -hmm. decluttered. And I'll tell my kids, I didn't make all this mess. It wasn't just me. So we all need to be involved. And I had one client who I absolutely loved and their family has a family song and their Alexa turns on at the same time every evening with their family song. And they all know, okay, it's time to get up. And I don't, I'm sure they don't say declutter, but they go around the house, pick up their things and put them away. So it's a routine they've established. And so I've told other people about that. And if you don't have an Alexa, just flip the radio on or let each kid choose on a different night from their playlist what they want to um, play or what they want to listen to and just make it fun and try to keep it positive. And then on the opposite end of the, end of the spectrum, not that this is a negative thing, but someone shared this with me when my kids were little, that here's your list. And if there was whining or eye rolling or complaining, and I would tell them this beforehand, then I added another uh, job to their list. So, they, very quickly, you know, we have to do this anyway. Let's just get it done. And then our list doesn't get longer. So I still have to remind my 14-year-old, if you whine, if you roll your eyes, if you complain, you're just going to get more. So even during this like quarantine time, at first I thought, okay, we're going to have a job every day, a task every day. Well, that got old very quickly. So Friday mornings have become our time. And I know I'm rambling, so I'm sorry. But yeah. another really good uh, trick with kids, and especially one of my daughters hates when I tell her to do things, which I think is so funny, because I was like that when I was little, I've always loved cleaning and organizing because I'm a little crazy. But if my mom told me to do it, I hated it. But if I chose to do it, <laughs> it was something I enjoyed. But anyway, even when my little, my daughter was little, she did not want me to tell her. So I would write down her list. And even one day she put her hand up, don't say it, just write it down. <laughs> <laughs> so I recommend, you know, once your kids can read, write down what they need to do. And now that my kids are older, so every Friday morning I text them what their jobs are. And oh. I don't even say a word. I'll Meet them where they are. So texting. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah. So 
that. All right. So kids are listening. I hope he's not listening. He's next door. <laughs> I'm going to text when we get off. <laughs> I would say on that, though, because you said if they're ready for reading, but if they're not, still the little size, you can put pictures, print on your printer and laminate so they know what their responsibility is. I wasn't even thinking about that with you can go and screenshot pictures. But when my kids were little, the girls had they were older. They had their chore list and my son wanted one, but he couldn't read yet. So I had a friend who was a good drawer, draw little pictures. So yes, so chore lists, things they can check off, you know, keeping it positive. And, and I don't know why, but I never say like, okay, let's take 10 minutes, but I always pick the number seven for whatever reason. So I'll tell my kids, seven minutes, it's all it's going to take you. Go start at the front door, work your way through the house, pick up what is yours and go put it away. Huh. It's just and it's done. Um, yes. All right. an item, so I'm excited. What are you going to start with babies? Say that again. Are you going to start with an item for babies? Well, not necessarily babies, but just okay. kids in general. Kids. Create paper. You oh. get your things. So even yeah. when babies, you have an immunization list. You have, you know, different appointments. You have um, well check stuff and things that you want to keep readily accessible that you don't want to run to your uh, filing cabinet. So I kept a magazine folder okay. for each kid, had a little label. Inside I have a folder and on one side it was more of the medical stuff. And then on the other side of the folder, I put um, school and sports things. So like one daughter did travel soccer and she needed her birth certificate every year. So then I was finding myself trying to crack the code on her safe, which I never could do. So I'd have to get my husband. So I finally just made a copy of it that I could recopy every year. But then, you know, once they get into school or even just, you know, birthday cards, things you want to save, but you don't have time to organize or file properly, at least you have a target, a spot to put things. And where do you put that? Where do you store that? This in my house, we have a counter in the laundry room, which is right off the kitchen. So I put that there. Um, some people will have a little desk or the, in their dining room. There are magazine or I don't know what it's called, but wall files or wall file holders. Oh, sure. The staff. Yes. So this is wire, but they can be made out of wood. They can be made out of plastic. So if you don't have the space, you can find that vertical space. So you can hang it behind a door. You can hang it on the wall. It's just something more easily accessible. So from that magazine rack, and more so when they get up into school or even preschool, you have all those a few um, special papers that you saved, mementos. And I have a school memory book that I absolutely love. My mom used the same one. Um, it is on a post in my Facebook page, but it's the school years. And each year, is a pocket you can put in their report card, test scores, a couple special journal entries or awards that they've won. But on each page, there's a spot for pictures, who their teacher was, what the school, what school they went to, the first day of school's date, their age, their weight, their height. Um, and when they're younger, it's like what I wanna be when I grow up. And on the second page, it's my favorite subject, hobbies, activities, awards. Then at the bottom, it's who they were friends with that year. And what I absolutely love is they sign it. Aww. Signature every year. And I couldn't, I didn't find this until my oldest, I think was in second grade, but I had enough paper signed that I went and cut out her name that she oh, had cute. added it. But I've included things on here. Um, what they were for Halloween, what they did for their birthday, what vacations we went on, or any other special thing. So it's all in one. Very cute. So you don't feel like as well you have to save every piece of artwork and everything. It's right there. It's just the memories. The memories are still there. Yes. And like I said, I accumulate more over the year than I know I'm going to keep. Mm -hmm. But then I was just, well, I, I watch other organizing bloggers and whatnot, and I just heard this this week. Keep the best, get rid of the rest. Oh, okay. I like that. Little tip. 
And one thing that helps me, and this is what I share with clients, is my parents thought they were going to have to leave their house sooner than they had wanted because somebody wanted their block. So when I went home for the summer, all of my stuff from the closet was in the hallway. And I yeah. said, you know, take what you want. I mean, not rudely, but just no. we need to go through this and take what you want. And I just looked at this pile like, I don't want it. Oh, like, okay. I really, there were a couple things. I think it killed my mom more than <laughs> she's like, you don't want your first doll. I'm like, I really don't. So that has helped me with my kids. I save special things or, you know, what they were really into. And I also have an accordion file folder that things that didn't fit in that little memory book. And then a thin, wide, like Rubbermaid container, Sterilite container for a few art projects, which they're probably not going to want half of that anyway. So I have very small things to contain what we keep. It's not massive, massive. Um, Somebody but, asked, how do you go from um, that big box or a bin, which I know right now I have a, a bin for each boy. Um, how do you go from that to the little book? How do you determine? Do you ask the kids what's most important? Do you just kind of what struck you as mom or how do you choose? When they're littler, I kind of pull more. And even and as they get older, you collect less stuff. I yeah. noticed. They purge it before you get to it. True. I, yeah, we probably don't see half of the stuff that they bring home. <laughs> That's where you take that whole box and you piece by piece, you start making categories. And then you find that you have, I don't need all of these drawings. You know, let your kid pick out their favorite one and you pick out your favorite one. So okay. then they have a say in it. And that is a good question because when I was listening to this blogger this week, she was saying it can be very damaging if you just get rid of all your kids stuff without their say. So there's got to be some balance there because you'll have some kids that want to keep everything in a super sentimental. I have one that is so sentimental he doesn't want to get rid of a t-shirt from when he was little. And so we have to put boundaries on that and okay, let's pick three. Like right now we're going through baby blankets because I'm we're moving um, just up the road this summer. So this is what I'm taking advantage of this time is purging my entire house. So it's really pushing me um, to go through that, but he wants to keep all of his baby blankets. <laughs> we cannot. So I said, you pick one and that's what we're keeping. You can pick one because yeah. when you have a baby, they're going to, you're going to want to get them or her their own things. And people are going to want to buy them presents. You're not going to want to use all this old stuff. Um, so yes, just sorting through really seeing what you have and then picking the best and get rid of the rest. Keep it so somebody has asked and suggested maybe to take pictures of um, the ones that you're going to throw away and then keep it on your computer. So that brings to a whole other probably day we can chat. But I then get thousands and I mean thousands and thousands and thousands of pictures um, on my computer. Um, and then how do you organize that? But anyway. That is my strong point, <laughs> digital stuff. So I can't really go into that. But yes, taking pictures and making photo books are definitely very manageable, contained, and it's realistic that you can go through those things. Uh, so when yeah. the kids were in school, even in preschool, I have a binder. Um, it's any ordinary binder, and then you get tab dividers. Let the first mm -hmm. weeks of, week of school or weeks of school start and find out what does the teacher send them. A lot of stuff's digital now, but when my kids were little, we got a newsletter. We got words of the week. We got math, this, that, or the other. We got all this. So you got to let it flow in. And I always say, I need a mess to happen before my brain figures out where. So don't think because you can't figure stuff out right away that there's something you know wrong with you. You're not good at it. I need things to get messy. And then I figure out how to make it right. Um, so each kid had their binder. It sat right next to those magazine dividers, had their names on it. But that's where all their school pairs. So you need a three-hole punch if you have a binder. Um, oh, and one other thing I forgot. When my kids were little and babies, and you have babysitters coming into your house, I had a babysitter do something undesirable, and I cannot remember what it was. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing horrible, but probably didn't clean something up or let them do crafts where they should. I mean, something that wouldn't bother a lot of people, but probably bothered me. Um, so I created a, what did I call it? a babysitting guideline. Oh, so 
Oh, nice. And I put it in a sheet protector so I could write on it. So I've got my husband and I, our cell phone numbers, our address. If there was an emergency, would they be able to tell, you know, police or whoever, fire, where to come? Then I have, what, four neighbors with their phone numbers. If they needed help and they can get a hold of us, these are people that my kids know and trust. Uh, and then our rules, you know, are friends allowed in the house? Are our friends allowed to go to other people's houses when we're not home? Where do we do crafts? Where do you put dirty diapers? I don't think this one, but we had a babysitter put a di dirty diaper somewhere and we didn't find it right away. So <laughs> on here. <laughs> And then I have a spot for, you know, what they're eating or what their snacks are. That's where you could write it on. And then bedtime routine. And I changed this as the kids grew. And then what time to expect us home. And a right erase marker right, wipes right off the top of that, right? Yes. So oh. that was awesome. It took a lot of stress off me. I didn't have to, I don't know if I ever talked to that babysitter about it. It just was known. Okay. <laughs> do whatever you're going to do um so yeah and in this binder this was kept in a cabinet in my kitchen and i had our neighborhood directory and i can't remember oh i was in the mom's club so i had the mom's club directory so things that were next to our address book but it was just one other thing to keep me organized and to not recreate the wheel so that's kind of another topic here is i learned this from my mom she would write down if she hosted a, a party or hosted a holiday she always wrote down what she made how much of everything and how much people ate so yeah. i've done that i am a spreadsheet freak mom love, are you listening yeah i love to make spreadsheets so this you will not be able to see it online because it's super tiny but my oldest is in college now so for her graduation party that's what i did just what my mom would have taught me so it's yeah a what we did, what the decorations were. We have a, I don't think I have it in here, but we have a diagram of the park, where the tables were, where the activities were set up. I hate recreating the wheel. It's like, why make your brain do that? And that blogger this week said, write yourself notes. So this is a very elaborate note. So next time we have our party, hopefully in a year with all this stuff clearing up, I will have a guideline. It won't be exactly the same, but It'll tell me what to do. Back when I was working, we would host barbecues for the whole facility. And we were doing the same dumb stuff. We were making the same mistakes every time we did it. And I'm like, what? So we got one of these. Um, so that's one example of a spreadsheet. And then grocery list, same thing. I felt like I was writing the same, down, same thing down every time. So super simple spreadsheet. What I typically buy. I was going to ask you, so do you just randomly write as it comes down, you write it down, or do you sort it out by aisle or by part aisle? aisle? I knew it. <laughs> aisle. And there are so many apps out there that I think do this. But again, I, I'm just a paper person. I can't remember what it is because my husband's aunt was telling me they have a shared grocery list. And I really want to get on that so that my husband, husband can add things. I can add, even the kids can add things. But I've got on top what our menu is going to be. I didn't write it on here this time. But And I'm another note, I'm super frugal. I was raised by the coupon queen, and you can't get that out of your blood. So I, with organizing jobs, my goal is not to spend all your money and buy the most expensive bins. It is to do it efficiently. We can make it as picture Pinterest magazine ready, depending on whatever your budget is. But we can try to spend as little as possible. It brings me as much joy to save other people money that it does me so yeah so this is just another simple spreadsheet and you can you don't have to do it on the computer you could make it on a piece of paper and just copy it but this helps a ton it reminds me what i'm making and then and i'm so frugal that i use this multiple weeks i just use different um colors of pen i love the idea because i use the i don't want to say her name a-l-e-x-a i don't want her to add something to my shopping list but i never know what i'm gonna get when i get to the store and i open up the app and i see some interesting requests I'm like no <laughs> um okay so a couple other thoughts are we, is this good I've yeah this is yeah <laughs> okay um so this was introduced to me i think last year they're called Poly pockets, not the dolls. They're like, <laughs> yeah, right. but they've got kind of a zipper top 
and you can get letter size, um, legal size. But I have found these to be super helpful when you're starting a project. And we'll just use my house getting built for that. All I had so far was like the cabinet design papers and I think our appliances. So I was keeping those in here so I could take them back and forth to the house. They were contained, they were protected, I'd keep them zipped in here. Well, now we're starting to move on to lighting and furniture and it's basically all jump, not jumbled up, but you have to filter through here. So now from the Poly Pocket, I've turned it into my accordion file folder. And I don't know what all my tabs are yet, so I've just used uh, post-it notes, just cut them down to size. And once I know what they are for sure, then I'll probably use my label maker. But now everything is out. When the builder calls or when I'm, my husband's asking about, you know, what did you guys talk about? What the dimensions are. So when we're picking out furniture, it's all nice. Whoa. I tear my ear off. Uh, so just when you've got a project, how are you containing it? Is it getting too big for a pocket like this? It doesn't, you can just use any kind of a envelope, but, but these are nice. They're not that expensive. So do you think it's most helpful that that is see-through and do items that you store things in, is it better when they are see-through? I like to see even bins, you know, like the laundry size bins when you're doing your storeroom. Yeah. There are so many colors, but I like to see what's in there. So it is nice. Now, if you want it private, again, that blogger was talking about, she's got like her memory box and she uses, these come in all different sizes. And I just learned that you can get mesh ones that are a little more flexible. And, and is this at like an office supply store, I assume? Staples is where I got these and you can find them online. Right. Staples is, awesome. they've got a lot of, a lot of good stuff. Um, but she, I can't remember what she was, but she had a black one of these that you couldn't see through, that she was something a little more private. But yes, for a project, I'm like, I know that is. And then I even used one of these. I was, I'm on the booster for one of my kids' sports. And so my daughter would bring home permission slips and checks for camp. And so I've sent one of these with her to practice every day. So everybody, or the coach and her knew where to put stuff. If it was raining or if she was gross and sweaty, everything came home back and forth in these. Just so I'm curious if you sent that with your daughter, um, what, how is your family? Are they just as organized or uh, is that frustrating to you or how's everybody around you? That is a good question. So that is a point I did want to make that depending on how many are, you have different people, different personalities, things that make sense to one. And my husband and I are both very anal, but both very different. Mm -hmm. He wants everything in place. So he'll shove things, and I hope I'm not throwing them under the bus. So he's kind of a shover. He just will open a drawer and put things so it's not out. I will pile things until I can organize it right. So we both kind of drive each other crazy. So we've set up systems where he can put things because the kids will be like, where did dad put my whatever? So we have mail slots that he puts our stuff in. Uh, we have baskets in certain places that he puts electronics and then they each have lockers. So we have to come up with, because I'll open a drawer and I almost have a panic attack. So I'm like, that doesn't belong there because I wasn't ready to put it away. Right. Or I hadn't come up with like the system. So you just, you have to work together. One way is not better than the other. Right. That's, and, and that's good. Yeah. So you have to find a place for the people who like to stack a place they can stack. Yes, absolutely. And yeah, I've got yeah. one that's super type B and we're both super type A and we've had to come to you know a meeting of the minds and I had to help her understand and myself that your way is not or my way is not always right but you have to get the job done right and it's funny now that she's out on her own she's a little more anal than I thought at home at home she's not but out and about so another good example of like a basket of where to put things when the kids were getting older and more electronics were coming out and everybody had chargers. Well, it was so weird. All of the chargers and the devices were always around this one outlet in the living room. I think our kids wanted to feel connected, but they were still doing their thing. So I finally just got a cute wicker basket I had in my basement, put it by the outlet, and that's where all the electronics and the chargers go. You know, if people are coming over and it looks too messy, you just pick up the basket and you go. 
But so that, that that's very good. I think everybody hear that, and I'm listening to that as well. You're just, if you continue to see the mess in the same place, then that's probably where you need to address it and not pretend it doesn't exist and get mad. And try to change the behavior. There's a reason they're there, and I I love that they wanted to be around us and connected. Let's just make it so everybody can be happy <laughs> and not stressed because there's a pile of cords on the floor. And they have a target of where to put things. My husband has a target of where to put things so that things don't get, you know, lost in the shuffle. Yes. So when you are working with your clients, I have a question. Do any of them struggle with the purge? Oh, gosh, yeah. So I will have clients call and say they're so ready and they're so not. And so you, you will do what we can, but, you'll, you know, I'm honest that, until you get rid of stuff. And that is a point I want to make. The most important part, like step of organizing is purging. Because if you don't get rid of the stuff, you're not making space for the things that you care about that are important, that you love. It's the, and this is a good example. I was doing a client's linen closet. And she said, I have organized this so many times. And then she left to go do an online meeting or whatnot. And I took everything out of the closet, sorted sing, uh, twin sheets, full sheets. Her entire room was just covered. And she came up and she goes, huh, well, I've never done this. <laughs> and I said, well, that's the problem. You just kept stacking, shoveling and shuffling and stacking. And you didn't really even know what you had in here. And she got rid of half of it once she saw and I'm sure a lot of people have watched Marie Kondo and that's yeah. her deal is you oh. just have to get everything yeah. in the pile. And I don't go that far. I try to sort as we're going, not just throw it all. But until you see the amount of what you have, she's like, oh, I do not need 15 sets of twin sheets. I'm like, no, you don't. So once, and that's on one of my posts as well. I mean, her linen closet is picture perfect. If you'd put it in a magazine, I'm like, oh my gosh because she got rid of half of the stuff. So purging is super important. And until they're ready, and with us moving, that's one of my new things that I say, would you take this with you if you were moving to a new house? Is it that important? Some people might. Does that probably translate as well when it comes into clothing? If you didn't love it this season, are you gonna love it next season? Yes. What would you recommend when it comes to the closet and clothing? get a friend to help because even I, and that's another point I want to make. I'm a, an organizer and it is so much easier when you have somebody. And that is one of the benefits of why you call an organizer. And one of the points was you have a buddy or you have a buddy system. There's somebody that you can be like, should I get rid of this? Should I not? Do I need 15 sets of twin sheets? It's just somebody to help you and reassure you that the world's not going to come to an end if you get rid of that sheet that has a hole in it. So I even wait and do my big projects for when my parents visit because they live out of state and they're both anal and organized and whatnot. So and especially when my kids were little, my mom would take over the house and my dad and I would tackle the storeroom or we would tackle a big landscaping project. Um, so if you don't, but if you have a friend that's fashionable, that's who I would do. So when my sister visited, she's more fashionable than, than I am. And we cleared my whole closet. I, I want to chuckle with that. I've had fun cleaning out my dad's, right, mom? <laughs> It can become a, a, a memory making time frame together. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> it is, it's crazy. But yeah, so don't feel bad if it's overwhelming to you. You, need, you have a friend or you call an organizer. And that's one of the benefits that to take some of the, the mountainous task in front of you. And it just gives you somebody to have to lean on to make these decisions. And everything looks so daunting. And then once you start, it all just kind of starts falling into place and, and whatnot. So. And so you said with getting together, my mother is commenting. She's outing me right now, quite frankly, but this is all right. She said, yes, I am busted. You're correct. She came here recently. And um, yeah, I have a whole craft area that I just don't get too often, but I don't want to get rid of it because it's good stuff and I love it. So anyway, it got down to the last bit. I just didn't know what to do and it's time for her to leave. So she took it home with her. So yes, that's what she's doing right now. She's going through it at her house. <laughs> 
<laughs> I've moved my mess to Illinois. <laughs> That's okay. Well, and then, and on the topic of craft stuff, I've got one daughter that never wanted even junk. She wouldn't let me get rid of. So sometimes I'd have to sneak to the recycling bin or sneak to the to the trash bin. But we recently purged and downsized a little bit. And if you know where it's going to go to, or when I, I was made to purge my fabric because I used to sew a lot and the thought, my friend came over and she said, you get to keep one bin out of three. And I'm like, you are crazy. But then I found out that the art teacher at school could take it and could use it. So now I'm like, okay, that's going to a good home or just the different craft supplies. A lot of the elementary school teachers will take that. And even with your kids, if they know some of their stuff is going to somebody that is in need or kids that don't have. And that's why I told my son with these blankets. And I, I definitely want to mention today that there's a women's shelter up in Delaware. Um, I would say trading spaces. It's um, ah, turning we'll point. We can post it in the comments later. Turning point. Sorry. Turning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I love that place. I took my kids up when they had their open house. And so they've seen it and they see where these kids live and what the, a lot of them come there with nothing. So that's why I want, told my son, we're going to take your blankets there. Some of them had to leave all their blankets at home. And that place will take baby equipment, um, pumps, you know, for nursing. And a lot of places legally can't take it. And for some reason they can. So I've taken lots of stuff from clients, you know, car seats, strollers, so when people are purging, you would recommend considering Turning Point in Delaware. And I know I've also donated to Common Ground Ministries up there as well in Delaware. So everybody has a different little connection of who and Goodwill gets a bad rap. But I've found that they do give back and they train people for jobs. They uh, recycle clothing that they can't sell into, I think, commercial carpet. So mm -hmm. I've finding more good. That's a very easy place to donate to, but some people- I know one suggestion I'll throw out there because it was really nice in our neighborhood and there was a lot of good feedback with some people, if they just were going through and whittling down books or toys, they put it out on their um, driveways or their front lawn. So we weren't interfering with social distancing, but they just put it out there and let the neighbors know, hey, it's out there if your kids need, you know, something new to play with or a new book to read. Um, then that was helpful. I don't know. It wouldn't be for all items, but um, that might be something now. Because that is a, a problem people are having right now. A lot of people are purging, but they have no place to put it. So right now I have a giant pile in my basement because I am slowly purging before we move. And some Goodwills are open. You just have to Google it and put yeah. in your zip code. So there are a few around Columbus that are open. But I thought I'm just going to keep making my pile, making my pile, and once this opens up, I'll either have someone come, you know, the VA comes, Kidney Foundation, they'll come and pick it up at your home. But I, when we start at some clients' homes and we get a get big pile going, they'll go on their neighborhood, you know, like Lewis Center Moms, and say, take a picture. This is all out on the curb. Come and get it by 3.30. And it is amazing when you go outside. At one client, there was a garage sale going on, like five houses down. And I said, get this stuff on your curb quick. And wow. we and there was one, it was tons of stuff. One piece was left. So oh my goodness. And reuse it. So it is, it is really good. Um, so you put free on it. It's gone, right? Yes. Okay. This is kind of embarrassing. And I was going to share it at the uh, beginning when I was talking about how to get your kids involved. <laughs> there, I have so many things that my kids are going to make fun of me for when I get older. Um, but I don't care. So we got a dog. They finally convinced us to let them get a dog. So they were supposed to, you know, feed them, feed them, take them for a walk, pick up the poop. Well, the poop was up the argument. You did. I did it. No, it was my turn. It's your turn. No, no, no. So I got up mid-argument. I wasn't argument, arguing with them. I'm like, you guys figured it out. But I went to the computer. I typed up their names. Can you see it? I'll go up a little bit higher. Yep. Found the poop emoji. <laughs> their name. <laughs> then I took packing tape, which packing tape I take to every job because you never know what needs box needs to be mended or if we're putting boxes together. But I, I don't even know to call it, my poor man's laminating. Oh, you laminated. Yeah. So I laminated their names. I got one of their old rings, probably from one of their word rings, put it on here. So now each week, 
whoever's on top, it's their job to pick up on Tuesday before the lawn gets cut. And if they didn't flip their name and it was on the front the next week, they can do it again. Bob again. So yes, yeah, so that has taken away some of the arguing and it kept track of whose turn it was. And since we're on the topic of dog, so we get this dog and he's one that eats his food in a half a second. So you don't leave his food out. So you have to feed him twice a day. Well, there was so much confusion of, did you feed him? Did he eat this morning? Da, da, da. So on the side of the food container, we wrote AM and PM and my daughter drew a little sun and a little moon. And then I put a 3M hook under each. So once you feed him, then you put his scoop on the hook for when he's supposed to be fed next. Oh, I love it. Yeah, so now we know when he needs to be fed. So on that note, 3M hooks are awesome. They come in every shape, every size, whatnot. This morning, mine, one of them actually broke. I must have pulled on it too hard because my pajamas, did I already say this? No. Nah. Like um, but I was threw my pajamas on the floor in the closet uh, because I wear them, you know, a couple nights. And then I found, I'm like, hmm, I've got a little space behind this hanging shoe rack or organizer. So I stuck a 3M hook behind there and that's where my pajamas go. So they're not on the floor anymore. So again, not trying to change the habit. Mm -hmm. I, it was right where I would always drop them, but now they're up on the wall versus laying on the floor. So do you find those to be good for most surfaces or do you have any cautions? I have not had those rip anything. I, I, mean, I promise it's not going to, and it has to be a smooth surface. So I'm always like, if we're in a storeroom and it's a concrete wall, I'm like, dang it. Because yeah. I always have tons of those and they make Velcro strips that yeah. you can hang up pictures. Yeah. That awesome. So then you don't have to put the holes in the wall. That's nice. Yes, because we will. Uh oh, my battery is getting low. Um, I can plug it in. But we will hang pictures when we're on jobs and do simple things like that. Okay. So, speaking of when you're on a job, I want to make sure that we get in there and we will put this in the comment section as well, Lori. But if um, somebody is wanting to eat this, information like i said we can go on for days i have so many questions but i will cap it here um but how do you determine is it an hourly or weekly or like how do you um how do you charge people now we're charging hourly hourly okay if it's like a three hour minimum and i am in the process of kind of looking at what our hourly rate is so we'll yeah. leave so how far out? Now, it's hard to know right now because we're, we're not normal or typical, but, but when it's not this type of a quarantine time frame, how far out do people usually need to um, schedule your services? I mean, it's best if at least a couple weeks, but I have found that people, when they're ready, they're ready. So, and we're pretty good at being able to get to you pretty quickly. So it just depends what the flood is of calls or and how about, um, how do they do that? Do they go to your website, which I have listed here below, or where's the best way to, how's the best way to get a hold of you to book your services? So now I don't have a website because Facebook has been very sufficient Sorry. for me, so I have not done a website. That's okay. Um, so yes, PMing me on Facebook is perfectly fine. I, I don't know if my number's on there, but you can text me. I mean, I respond quicker to text, so if I don't message you back immediately no I will get to it but yes and then we'll exchange phone numbers and and start talking awesome so I do have her email not website email sorry <laughs> right here um, on the screen but if you wouldn't mind when we are done if you could put in the comment section um, any of your contact information so that they can get a hold of you and please just make sure to tell her who you are <laughs> um, let her know you saw her here and then uh, kind of give her an idea of what you want so she can get back to you with the best information does that sound good that sounds good and before we're done once yeah. I about what we typically or who we typically organize yeah went off on a tangent so typically households but one of my favorite jobs was a classroom I had a teacher that was just so overwhelmed with stuff and she just could not get she just couldn't do it herself and it was such a fun job this lady was so passionate and loved her kids and they're so bogged down by time and other commitments that things just pile up. And 
We mm. went in and just hauled out boxes and boxes of books and you could just see the stress like lifting off of her shoulders, but it was so exciting. And I had, ended up getting my daughter involved and turned it in more of like a service project because it killed me to, you know, charge her because of what she does. Um, not that she's more important than everybody, but just, you know what I mean? It was an yeah. inner city school mm -hmm. and oh my gosh. So really any area. So we've done that. I've done whole houses where we've spent months going through. And I had a friend whose parent died and I went up to the parent's house, inventoried the whole thing so that they could go back and show family members what's there so that they could get the mementos that they wanted. Then we went back up and I had um, Restore from Habitat Humanity lined up to, you know, who's gonna come and get all of this stuff. So that's another service. And then that same family before the dad needed to go into assisted living, I helped her get the room set up before he moved in. I bet that that is a huge area of need and people don't even realize who to go to for that. So that's great information. Uh, and then we were, I was talking with another potential client before all this craziness went down that when they had to move their mom out of her house I think she's out of state, I can't remember, but just the emotional and they didn't have the time. So they just stuck all of her stuff in a storage container. And that, so when she found out what I did, she just goes, oh my gosh, I think we need you to go purge and organize the storage container. I'm like, oh my gosh, that is such another, because yeah, I heard, I think it was at church one day that one of the leading top growing industries is storage units like the storage business, which is so sad because most of the stuff there is not needed. Absolutely. A friend tell me, you're going to be so proud of me. We just got a storage unit, put all of our crap in it. And then as we get time, we're going to just go pull a box. And I'm going, no, you'd spend less money on an organizer to come and deal with it than what you're going to spend month after month. And are you really going to get to that storage unit. That totally makes sense. So how do you do all of this by yourself or do you have anyone to help you? Sorry, so I typically work with another girl. Okay. Um, and sometimes people are like, well, I don't wanna spend that much money. You get more bang for your buck because you have two like-minded people that bounce ideas off of each other. And when one of us is talking or working with the homeowner, the other one is going gangbusters, getting things cleared or rearranged or whatnot and then then your job is smaller so you don't spend more money because you have more and then i've got additional people that i can call so right oh, during the holidays we had another whole house purge before they were moving and she's a lady that said she's ready to get rid of stuff and you wonder you're like hmm, are you oh my gosh stuff was flying out of the house we had three i think va came and picked up three truckloads of stuff and wow. five, two of us, five days. And one of the days we brought in another one because there was so life, medical health issues just took, it happens. And that's the other thing I want to mention, just no judgment. I mean, we have seen everything. People are, you know, what are the reasons why you don't call an organizer? You're embarrassed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're mortified at the thought of somebody seeing your mess. You know, nobody's as bad as me. We've seen everything. We don't mind getting dirty. We've seen mouse poop. We found mice, mouse, mice carcasses. It doesn't bother us. The bigger the mess, the more excited I get. So you cannot shock us. We will not judge you. And that's one of the comments we get. You guys didn't, I didn't feel judged. So maybe I'll give you a call then for my garage. <laughs> yeah, that, what? I'm wondering if that is something I can do safely now is garages. And the key to that is you go. You're outside, right? Yes. So I'm trying to think. I've got a friend that's a doctor. I may call and say, do you think this is correct social distancing if I market that I can go in and do garages? I'll have them. When you need to come out and you know ask questions, I can put the mask on. Very great idea. Yes. Is there anything else that you would like for us to know? And then I do want, before we get off of here, what 
people are, they've gotten so many ideas today and I am so thankful for what you've done. Somebody commented, by the way, about our green. We did not plan that, but yes, we both have on green. So anyway, um, what should people do? So I've got my jeans on, by the way. I've got my hair tie ready to put my hair up and get busy. Where should people go today? Um, where should they get started as they head into the weekend? What's your tip of what's next? Get your list together. Prioritize it like we were talking. And then pick a simple thing from that list that will only take you 15, 20 minutes to give you that, let's say, win to get that feeling of, oh my gosh, I did it. Look at that, it looks awesome. Because once you get started, then that ball gets rolling and then you feel like you can go tackle another thing. Then if you have the time, tackle the worst thing on your list. Because even when I clean just like a weekly clean, I try to do the things I don't like first so I don't have to keep thinking about it all day long. Um, but realistically, if you don't have time to tackle that, or if it's, let's say it's your whole storeroom, Take one shelf at a time, take everything off, make your decisions, keep the best, get rid of the rest. Is it necessary? Go back to Marie Kondo. Does it bring you joy? And just get that pile going that needs to be donated. Put down at the bottom of your, your curb, like you said, that's a great idea. Hey, drive by. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I hear from today, does it bring you joy? And keep the best and get rid of the rest. Yes. I like that. Yeah. Oh. You know what? I do have a few other things down here, but one thing that I, it is on my site, I always envied people that had really stylish big purses, but because of my issues slash analness, I could not handle a giant purse just filled with stuff sitting at the bottom of it. Well, I have found purse organizers yeah. and they have pockets for everything. Big pocket, zippered pockets, little mesh pockets, and it has handles, but you basically just pick it up, put it in your purse. And if you're a person that changes purses, I don't. But you can just take it from one purse to the other, so you always have everything you need. I don't even have to look in my purse. I always know where every, where my chapstick is, where my keys are, where my Kleenex is, all that. But this purse organizer is awesome. And I just want to say one thing, because I do have a few notes. This is what people say after we have completed the job. Just a few things. Best money I've ever spent. I wish I would have called you sooner. It put me at, we put, or they put me at ease the first couple minutes they were here. I feel like I've lost a hundred pounds of stress. Ah. You gave me the gift of time back to my life. And I immediately felt a sense of relief. I don't know where this quote came from, but they say for every minute you spend organizing, you gain an hour. Yeah. So, so many people are like, I don't have time. I don't have time. And it's like, put on the brakes, give yourself a day or two, and it's going to give you so much more time. And I'm sorry I keep talking, but one other thing that I do, uh, right now I have two clients that I go to on a regular basis that work from home. One, I kind of help keep her whole house managed. So once a week I go in, it could be organizing one area of her house it could be her office, maybe running a couple errands, but just to keep her business and her house managed. And then the other client, I go in every couple of weeks for a few hours, pull all of his files for the for those meetings, the next couple or appointments for the next couple of weeks. Then I put away everything that he's done with, that he's all the people that he saw for the last two weeks have a bunch of stuff to file, and that allows them to do what they are so good at you know, the businesses that they're in and it lets me do stuff that I love. They're like, you like to go in and file? I'm like, I love it. Um, so that's another- A life manager. We still do what we love and what we're good at, but we can have the backside done as well. Right, absolutely. So <sighs> getting your office clean, helping you get some systems together and yeah. Yes, so Caroline says hello, by the way. And my mom says it doesn't matter if they make fun of you, organize, so- Here's the other thing they'll probably make fun of, and it is on the website, and I found this in the magazine, but my kids were really little, but I have three strips of different colored duct tape on the garage floor, and is that, that's where they parked their bikes. So they have had them at a diagonal. I think it was probably Better Homes and Gardens or Martha Stewart or something, but that duct tape has been there at least 15 years. The bikes have gotten bigger, but they 
park their bikes. It's again, having a target, having a boundary, where do you put stuff? So I very rarely ever had to be, put your bikes away. This is incredible. You are just so full of amazing information. And I thank you so very much. Well, um, Caroline, thank you so much for connecting us. And I was super nervous, but I can talk about organizing for... Well, I kind of seeing this in the future. Could we do a 2.0 when it's normal out there and maybe come out and do uh, something while you're on a project and sure. do screenshots of how befores and afters like you have on your website or on your Facebook page, um, not website. I keep saying that. You're, down, you're bound to have one, I know. <laughs> done. I yeah. Get it live. But it would, that would be kind of fun. Can we maybe plan that out maybe later this year? Absolutely. Excellent. Lori, it has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for joining us today and giving us a wealth of information. Thank you for having me. And please feel free, anybody, to message me, text me. If you want me to talk you through something that you're trying to get organized and you're just coming up to a dead wall or whatever. But I love and sorry to keep talking, but I love just walking through Home Depot and walking through Lowe's until I find what I'm looking for. And you can do that online as well. So if you oh. have a, if you're struggling, please call me during this time. And I can't come out. Just give me a call or virtual shopping right now anyway. Right. Yes. Yeah. There's tons of stuff online, but I love to go out and feel stuff and pick stuff. And I always have a tape measure in my purse so that I can measure what it is. And yeah, even how to, how to uh, organize your car. My dad, oh, wow. so funny. she's like, mom, you should do a post on how to organize your car. We need that. We need that. We should post that for all realtors, how to have your trunk organized. It's a constant on the go. <laughs> yes. I have helped someone do that. Before. Somebody I worked with, I was like, okay, we got to get this under control because we're riding together and it's driving me crazy. So yes. And go with the car. It's the trunk. So we'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you so very much. Thank you to everybody out there watching. Um, again, Lori Morris, Lori organizes. Check her out um, on Facebook and send her a message. Her information will be in the comments and her email is lorioorganizes at gmail.com. In the meantime, if you have any questions about real estate in Central Ohio, buying, selling, or investing, give me a call. Chrissy uh, with Homes by Chrissy, 614-332-0342. Bye, Lori. Bye, everyone. Thank you.